Hello and welcome. So about two months ago I invested some money in buying a 3D printer with the clear goal of printing parts and enclosures and whatnot for my electronic projects. Now some time has passed, I used up some filament and guess how many of those I have printed so far? Yeah, the answer is none. Okay, why is that? Yeah, let me tell you the story here. The story of a beginner with 3D printing. As with most stories related to gadgets, this one started with an unboxing. And hey, I even had a little helper. Even though at first we were overwhelmed by the number of parts and accessories, it quickly turned out that assembling the printer, which is a reality industry, was pretty easy. It took one and a half hour or so, then I could start loading the test filament they have provided and I thought I was ready to start my first print. For this I have used the ready to print G code that came with the printer. What a shame, my filament wasn't sticking to the bed surface, not even a bit. Never mind, Google is my friend, right? So after some googling I just found out that the most important thing to start with is leveling the bed. So I've done it. And it worked out pretty well. I was ready to finally start my first print. So eventually I ended up with this. Yeah, they didn't even give enough filament to finish the demo model they have provided. What a shame. Oh well, my printer was working and I was happy regardless. So the next logical step was to order some filament. I decided to order three different colors and brands, so I had some material to experiment with. Remember, at this point I was only printing the single example G code that came with the printer. While the filament was on its way to me, I decided to make the next step. I already knew that I will need a software called a slicer to import and print my own models. So I decided to go with the one called Cura. It's free software, so I immediately downloaded and installed it. After starting it for the first time, I nearly got a heart attack. Oh my god, look at the number of those parameters there. Are they really necessary? All of them? Do I have to know all of them? The answer is obviously no, but if you plan to delve deeper into 3D printing, eventually you will need to learn a lot of those. Personally, I decided to go start fiddling with the parameters and print the same object over and over again while changing those. Interestingly enough, at some point my prints stopped to stick on the bed once again and I thought I have the right leveling, so I ran out of ideas and started to look around on YouTube. That's when I ran into Ivan Miranda's excellent video about using a mirror as a print surface. Ok, let's try it, thought to myself. Luckily for us, in his video he carefully explains the whole process. Dry it out with a 
paper towel and never ever 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 touch it with your hand so i decided to give it a shot replacing the heat bed wasn't looking particularly hard anyway before doing this upgrade you have to consider a few differences between the glass and the original heat bed so the glass has pretty different physical parameters like thickness weight and so on thickness means that you will have to re-level your bed from the scratch having a drastically different weight is a totally different story however and back at the time i wasn't aware of that so this time the acceleration parameter of the printer comes into play in this case acceleration affects how fast the printer moves the heated bed on the y-axis in my case the mirror i used was like four times the weight of the original print surface this meant that I had to do slower prints, otherwise results became unpredictable. Another side effect of using a mirror was that I had to heat up the bed. Previously with the original printing service I didn't have to do that. PLA was printing fine without a heated bed. Now I had to, otherwise it didn't stick. But after heating the bed to 60 Celsius, it worked like the charm, so I accepted that I will have to use the printer differently, with a heated bed and with slower prints. Regardless of my happiness about being able to print once again, printing simple parts for 6 and 8 hours became annoyance. So I was thinking to myself, what else could I change? Still sticking to the mirror, I decided to play around with different parameters in Cura. So I started to slowly change layer height, infill and so on. And each time I changed something, I reprinted the same part again and again. A good idea here is to pick a part that you can actually use no matter how many of it you have at hand. In my case I couldn't really go wrong with a child's toy. And then one day, the unexpected happened. Suddenly, once again, my print stopped sticking. So I get overly frustrated, desperate, sad, what else? And I started thinking, I should just sell the printer and leave the whole stuff. But then I didn't give up. So eventually I reinstalled the original printing surface that came with the printer and suddenly everything started working again. So what was the reason? Well, probably leveling again, but not sure. I mean, I've changed a lot of things. And to be honest, I couldn't reproduce the problem. But hey, now it works. And I learned one thing. 3D printing is about trial and error. So what now? Well, to be honest, at this point I feel confident. I also started printing upgrades for my printer and started utilizing stuff like Octoprint and so on. So yeah, we could say I've learned the basics. And now finally it's time to start printing those enclosures. So hooray, <laughs> you can expect some projects soon. Hey, thanks for watching this video, if you liked it, hit like, if you want to help my channel and see more of my content, hit subscribe. If you want to check out behind the scenes and want to know more about me, then follow me on social media, you can find the links here. Thank you again and see you next time.